Kitchen and Wait. Hey guys, thank you so much for coming back to this episode of In the Kitchen with Caitlin. We are making one of my all time favorite things, pumpkin pie. And don't worry, it's not a scary thing to make a pie because we have a foolproof candied walnut crust. Here to help me is my good friend, David Parkinson. Hello. He is one of the captains of my running team, the Dashing Whippets, because what do runners like more than running? Pie. Pie, pie's, pie's good. I was gonna say eating, but pie, eating pie. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, enough about us, let's get started. First things first, you can't really have a pie without crust. Uh-huh. It's, it's just kind of how it It works. would be a little messy. Yeah, I mean, you could, but that's a whole different show. So we're gonna start out making our nut crust. So I already got some crushed walnuts and we wanna crush them even smaller. We want them almost like sand. Um, so we got a blender or a food processor would work too. And we're gonna pour them in. Yay. And we're just gonna crunch these bad boys down. Okay. All right. See how it's getting like sandy, but there's still some little chunks in there, so you'll have a little like nuggets of nut. Yeah, that's what you want. That's perfect. All right, so we melted some butter, we pulverized our walnuts, and we're gonna make it into a crust. Yeah, so here we go. All right, guys, so you're adding your nuts, you're adding a cup and a half of sugar, so if you're on a diet, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> um, start stirring that together. Okay. And then we're gonna gradually add um, a, a whole stick of butter. Cause it's a lot of butter. Yeah. And we need to incorporate it so it looks like wet sand. So I noticed there's no flour in this crust. No. Nope. It's candy. Isn't that awesome? That we're making good. a candy. So the butter and the nuts. Um, we're gonna pack it tightly into the pie tin, and then the sugar's gonna melt and act like a glue. And it's gonna glue this all together, and then when it cools, it's gonna be almost like a, a nut brittle, but not as like hard on the teeth. Your grandma with dentures can like bite into it, you know? <laughs> Just don't make it too thick. We'll show you that though. We'll, we'll, I'm, I'm getting too excited right now. Let's, let's take it one step at a time. So while David's incorporating and making it look like wet sand, um, tell us a little bit about something that we talk about on the show a lot. I think you might have heard of it. It's called uh, Foodition. Oh, you know, I've heard about Foodition's before. Oh my God. Um, it's kind of a big deal. So I actually worked in a bakery okay. um, in high school. Uh -huh. And um, we made a lot of pies, especially before the holidays. Yay. And so the, the day before a big holiday, like a Thanksgiving or a Christmas, um, we would have a basically a 24 hour period where it was all hands on deck, just making pies. Wow. Um, so by the time the holiday would roll around, I was pretty much sick of looking at pie. That's an insane notion to be sick of looking at pie. I know, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's a little crack. Um, but the real food addition came at the end of the baking. Mm -hmm. All the pies were done and out. It was time for the 8 o'clock in the morning shot of whiskey. <laughs> 8 o'clock in the morning? Well, you've been baking all night. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. Got yep. it. So it was more of a nightcap. It mm -hmm. just happened to come first thing in the morning. Five o'clock somewhere. Yeah, five o'clock somewhere is right. What kind of whiskey was it? Um, you know, it was usually something pretty cheap. Okay. Yeah, you're yeah. working in a bakery, it's not, uh... Wait, you just said you were working in high school, so you were taking shots of whiskey and I... <laughs> oops, oops, you we should probably in... cut that part out. <laughs> you just admitted to underage drink. I mean, you can't get arrested for, for it now. I mean, you're obviously no longer underage. So, I think I'm, I think I'm good on that front. Yeah, yeah, we didn't say who sold it to you. <laughs> Everyone's safe. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Cool. We're back with In the Kitchen with Caitlin. 
Um, we're right at the Intrepid, and we're talking to folks about their food dishes, which, in case you haven't heard, is a food-based tradition. We're here right now with Veronica, and she's going to talk to us about her family's food dishes. So, Veronica, uh, my family is—they are from Russia. They, I was born in Moscow, and my uh, parents always uh, love to cook. And uh, my mother cooks cooks very delicious borscht. It's actually a Ukrainian dish. It's like a soup with the vegetables. She adds uh, uh, beets, uh, carrots, potatoes, cabbage, uh, onion, uh, tomato uh, sauce, and she bo cooked it. And it's very, very delicious. And you can, you can eat it with uh, um, sour cream or just like that. Nice. And when does your mom make this? Uh, she makes it uh, on an everyday ba basis. Okay. Okay. So it's uh, all the time like a comfort food kind of yes. thing. Yeah. 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 What's your favorite thing about it when she makes it? Uh, the process. Really? <laughs> yeah. She always, uh, um, when she, she's making it, she likes to explain, she, she likes to, to explain how she does it. It's one of those things where she passed down the recipe, but you're still working to get it the, like, the way she did it, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, I try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny, you know, my, there's recipes in our family that are the same way, where it's like that one person does it and that's like their thing, and then you're trying every year to like remake it better and better, right? Yeah, but you never can do the same way that, that your parents do, mm -hmm. because it's only their way, uh -huh. and it's so hard to get their, their taste <laughs> of the food. Exactly, because they, they put love in it. Yes, yeah. yeah. Especially. Yeah. Especially moms. <laughs> Especially moms, yeah. <laughs> moms food is the best. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Veronica. It's been great talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Beef that up. It should have a little give to it. it sh you know, it shouldn't be like a total dough. There should be chunks in it because that's how you know it's going to congeal properly. Yeah, there shouldn't be a water, it should be wet, not watery. Got it, wet, not watery. Mm-hmm, there you go. Yeah, that's looking like wet sand. We can throw a little bit more nuts in there, actually. A little bit more. Here, stirring camera, that's a really good shot. Just a little bit more, and I think we'll be good. <laughs> this is actually a really fun crust to make. There's no raw eggs. <laughs> it's gluten free. It's gluten free. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the, the filling is, but then this is the, the crust. Yeah. Gluten free. There you go. Yeah. So this is the uh, gluten free episode of In the Kitchen with Kaden. I've had a few actually. Oh. Yeah. Um, because we had some gluten free guests um, last and, season. And since you didn't get your finger in the crust, it's still a vegetarian episode also. It's true. Um, and funny story, because there's butter in, a lot of butter in this crust, you don't need to grease it anymore. Perfect. When you put it in. It's kind of amazing, because <laughs> I'm laughing and I shouldn't be. <laughs> it's like you're going to grease something that's basically got over a stick of butter in it. You can even see how much, you see it's, it's not even staying in the bowl when I turn it. So yeah, don't worry about greasing these. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab our pie dish. Oh God, I'm, it's really pretty. It's gonna be even prettier when there's actual pie in it. All right, so you're gonna just mold it in there. So David, mm -hmm. this is gonna be really fun for you. You take some plastic wrap. So you hold on to this for a minute. Okay. And what you're gonna do is I'm gonna like plop it in here, um, and then you're going to use that and mold it to the pie tin. Got it. With the plastic wrap, because otherwise it's gonna like mush to your fingers, and it's not gonna be good. Yeah. So I'm gonna, because we need that for like the sides. I'll like start it off for you. Okay. But we wanna get it pretty flat and thin. So I think that should be good. I'll do one more little scoop. All right, go to town. That's looking good. Yeah. I'm gonna put this to the side. Yeah, so smush that in there. We'll move this over for now. Oops. 
All right, guys. So like David's doing, yeah, really, really gentle. Perfect. That's looking really good, David. I can tell you've made pies before. Oh, once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you just want to, literally, it's the easiest thing. You just want to shape it to the dish and see like how David is very, very artistically using the um, plastic wrap. And it's just like, let it be your friend. Yeah, you, know, you know, give it some love. Um, so that was a really good food dish. In. I was really, really impressed <laughs> by your, your shot of whiskey. Oh. Um, but how, um, geez, pies. Wow. So this was like so perfect. You weren't kidding when you wanted to make pies. Oh, I love making pies. Yeah. What, so what, what's your favorite kind of pie? Uh, you know, pumpkin is definitely up there. Um, yeah, me too. I'd say it's, it's kind of a toss up between pumpkin and apple. Um, pumpkin's nice because no matter what kind of pumpkin pie you're making, you only have to deal with one mm -hmm. layer of crust, and so that makes things a lot um, easier. Yeah. Um, but it's also hard to beat a, a slice of fresh apple pie. Oh, I know. Maybe a, a follow-up episode. I already have an apple focaccia, oh. and it's actually an apple pie filling on top of a focaccia bread. That sounds really good. Yeah, so all I would need to do is learn how to make a, a more appropriate crust. Okay. Because this would be too, too dense, I think, of a crust for the apples. Yeah. And that already has walnuts in it, so that would be a lot of walnuts, uh -huh. too. Yeah, it's an apple walnut. It's, yeah, you guys have seen it, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how are we looking here on the crust? This is looking amazing. Yeah. Okay. So now you pop it in the oven. You peel the plastic wrap off. Don't don't leave that on because <laughs> that won't taste so good. You pop it in the oven for 10 minutes and then take it out and let it cool. Don't touch it though while it's cooling because it's um, going to harden. Okay. Um, so what we're doing is is we're melting the sugar and then when the sugar melts, it's going to like form a syrup and then it's gonna get hard. That sounds really good. Yeah, all right. So we've just taken our pie crust out of the oven. <laughs> How do you know when to do it? Okay, 10 minutes, about. But watch it because ideally you want the sugar to be all bubbling and don't be like, oh my God, all my hard artistry in the work and now it's all bubbled up. Why did I do that? Don't freak out. It's just the sugar bubbling. Everything else, like all the nuts and everything, are actually where you put them. Relax. So once it's good and bubbled up and it starts to completely bubble over, that's when you take it out and let it sit. And then it'll start to collapse, which this is probably the only time in baking anything you get happy when it's collapsing. <laughs> that means you did it right. And it'll cave back in and look very, like, cavernous. Um, and let it cool to room temp. Um, in once it's room temp, you're you're ready to use it as a crust. It, so then, at that point, we just take the pumpkin and put it on the crust. Right, pumpkin pie. Got That's it. it. Enjoy. No. <laughs> no. Then we have to do our filling. So I already made some pumpkin puree from a real pumpkin because I personally don't like doing pumpkin pie any other way. I'm totally fine using canned pumpkin for a million things, but for pumpkin pie, I just need it to be a real pumpkin. Um, but I'll describe what to do anyway. So you'll slice off the top, scoop out the seeds and the stringies, cover it in tin foil, and then you put it in the oven at 400 degrees for one hour, or until you can literally, with your finger, poke it, and it will cave in on itself. That's when you know it's good. You will literally be able to just peel off the skin. Okay. And um, just mash it like you do mashed potatoes. And voila, pumpkin puree. Oh. You don't even need to like put it in a puree or it, it literally just falls apart once you cook it like at that temperature. So now that we know how to make pumpkin puree, let's make the rest of this filling, shall we? All right, so I'm gonna move this beautiful pie crust to the side along with our pumpkin, because that's the pumpkin pie, right? And bring back a mixing bowl. All right, David. Do I get to do some more mixing? Had you guess. Awesome. So let's um, start with the puree. OK. So throw that in there. Yeah. Yum. Beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> so we got that. Um, next, we're going to do some condensed milk. OK. So yeah. 
beautiful. You can use the little spatula to help you because it's all going to get mixed in anyway. So viscous. Right? We're just um, going to get a tablespoon. Yeah. Delicioso. That looks really good. Not really, but <laughs> it will. <laughs> it will. Tastes a lot better than it looks. It tastes a lot better than it looks, condensed milk. Oh, make sure you get sweetened condensed milk, too. That's a big, um, that's a big important thing, because it will be quite savory if you do not, because <laughs> that's where we're relying on the condensed, sweetened condensed milk for our sweet factor in our filling. There's, because we, <laughs> I thought about adding sugar to this recipe, but then I remembered we literally have just sugar and nuts in the crust, and so it can only take so much. You figured we'd be good in the. I figured you'd be covered, yeah. You're welcome. Um, and so, then also, so you start mixing that, okay. and I'm gonna get a tablespoon of this. This is um, a simple syrup that I have made with fresh ginger and cinnamon. So we're gonna do a couple of tablespoons of that. So just keep mixing. Okay. Mm, we'll do three. And this is, This is like my little hidden secret because it's like, mm, it gives a little spice to it. You know, anyone who likes a pumpkin spice latte, that's like part of it. And then, oops, I'm gonna reach over you for one second. And now we have a little bit of uh, pumpkin pie spice, which is a shortcut. But um, if you don't, it's um, nutmeg. <laughs> I'm laughing because there's a story here that I'm about to tell about <laughs> pumpkin pie spice and why it's important. Um, it's nutmeg, clove, um, cinnamon, and um, ginger. Um, when I was a kid, because uh, I always liked to cook, so we're gonna put this in, and you can stir this in too. I always liked to cook, even as a kid. So I went to the pumpkin patch, and I came home with my pumpkin, and I didn't sit, and I said, Dad, I don't want to carve my pumpkin. I want to make a pie out of it. I was like 10 years old, and my dad is a caterer. You know, he's like, you know, we're a food family, so. He was like, of course, of course he said yes to this. So we went to the grocery store and got all the other stuff that I would need to make this fresh pumpkin that I had just picked myself into a pie. And my dad <laughs> walked away and just like, let me do my thing. And he goes, all right, call me when it's ready. And I did everything from like, you know, chopping the top off of the pumpkin by myself and baking it down, doing the pure, everything. Um, which now thinking back, like a 10 year old, I'm like, and my dad was just like, yeah, knock yourself <laughs> out. <laughs> but it's, I mean, he obviously knew that I knew of my way around the kitchen. Anyway. Well, he probably figured it would keep you occupied for a couple hours and out of his hair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He knew how long <laughs> baking off a pumpkin takes. So um, I grabbed spices and they all, like my mom had these spices, I think the McCormick ones, and you know how they're all just like the, like that yellowish label and a red top, and they all look exactly the same. Um, and they're all just like a brownish color too, and it's just like a long, if you don't buy pumpkin pie spice, because I wanted it to be as gritty as possible, um, it's a long list of spices that you're putting in. And it's all like, teaspoon of this, teaspoon of this, teaspoon of this, teaspoon of this, okay. So then what I did was I grabbed uh, I was well for one I was using a tablespoon and not a teaspoon so this is great I'm already it's gonna be a really flavorful pie and one of the ones that I grabbed was um, cumin oops I don't think that's a traditional pumpkin pie spice <laughs> no it's not it's not um, this pie came out so bad that my dad made my uncle eat it to say not to hurt my feelings and watch him eat it as a joke um, because it tastes, sorry Uncle Kevin, it tasted so bad. It tasted like a foot. It tasted like a foot. It was bad. And um, then I tried a second time um, to make a pumpkin pie um, and, it, and it was pretty bad. Um, and then some years later, I made a third try at pumpkin pie because I was dating a guy and I wanted to go to a pumpkin patch and he asked me why and I said, well, I'll make you a pie if you take me to the pumpkin patch. He didn't take me to the pumpkin patch. He said, I can go to Trader Joe's and buy you a pumpkin, and then you can make me a pie anyway. And that's what he did. And then I was like, oh, 
crap, I guess I'm going to have to get good at making pumpkin pie, because here we are at this guy's house, and he's like, all right, waiting for my pie. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, awesome. And this is what happened, and it actually turned out really good that time. So that's why the name of the recipe, if you look on the website, is going to be Third Try at Pumpkin Pie. Third time's a charm. There we go. So David did a beautiful job of mixing, and when you look like you've got a little bit of a, like a little orangey, yellowish mix, and everything's well blended, that means you're ready to rock. Now that our crust is ready, our filling is ready, we're going to assemble pie. We're getting there. So um, make sure you coat a pan with tin foil. This is going to protect our beautiful crust because there's sugar in it and sugar cooks up and browns up really, really fast. So you don't want it to burn. So this is like creating a protective layer um, against overcooking the bottom of our pie. So you just put it there and it's beautiful. And then we can get a lovely ladle. And you can do the honors, David. Oh, thanks. And just spoon in. Um, and you can get really, um, you can just get rustic with it and leave like chunk, like, you know, looking like swoopy. Or you can get really crafty with it and like make it like, you know, swirl it around. You know, it all tastes the same. It just depends on how fancy you want to get, right? How fancy are you going to get, David? Uh, you know, I'm thinking pretty fancy. Okay. I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's looking good. Have you done this before? Uh, you know, that this is not my first pumpkin pie. <laughs> you're, you're telling me you have a pot pumpkin pie recipe, right? Uh, yeah, I do. I make a, um, a maple bourbon pumpkin pie. Stop it. Nice. Um, Wow. Yeah. A lot of a lot of dark liquor in your pie making. <laughs> there, se there seems to be a there seems to be a theme. <laughs> I've been following this trend. I, I guess. Um, so you hate you hate it, right? Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, terrible. yeah. That's awful. Um, don't, don't buy that for David. It's a so it's that's a really good pie recipe, but it ends up looking very brown between the maple syrup and the mm -hmm. the bourbon. So this is a this is a much more pumpkin color to it than that one has. It does. It's very pumpkiny looking. Love it. Yay! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this episode. I, I'm like short of jumping up and down because I'm. <laughs> I'm just sorry we still have to bake it because I am ready to eat this right now. I know, there's no raw eggs. <laughs> it's true, another, another uh, uh, good point for this pumpkin pie. Right, it's, I think it's, no, there's, there's butter, so it's not vegan, condensed milk, so it's not vegan, but, but. it's vegetarian. There you go. All right. So now that it's looking, it's, it's really beautiful. Yeah. That's kind of fancy, David. I'm not going to lie. Um, well, that's all there is for that. So now you put it. Uh, oh, no, there's not. You have to cover it. Oops. Uh, <laughs> so we cover it, too, because guess what? The top of the crust is at risk for the same burning as well. So make sure you tent this bad boy. Cause you don't want it to, like, stick to it. So kind of fluff it around it. So you don't want it to lay flat. I'm just going to give a little shield. So you want it to be hot. You don't want it to be burnt. <laughs> All right. So now what we have, it looks like it, our pumpkin pie looks like it's ready to go into space, which is great. Um, you're going to start it baking at 400 degrees for the first 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then you turn it down to 350 for the next 30. So once your pumpkin pie of deliciousness is out of the oven, um, it's gonna have to cool, obviously, and it's gonna look a little something like this. And once it's cool, then you can start to cut into it. You need um, a pie slicer or some sort of serrated knife to cut through. Um, don't wait till it's completely, completely cool, because it might be hard to cut the crust. Do it when it's still a little bit warm. Score, you know, score through. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, it's time to plate up and get to everyone's favorite part. So, David, it's time for everyone's favorite part. We get to eat it. Yeah. Yay! Uh, All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Cheers.
Crustless crust. How do you feel? Oh, it's great. You were right. It, it really tastes like candy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's like... And when it's warm, it's the best. Oh, it's I'm perfect. Oh, my God. Oh. I think the, um, the fresh pumpkin made a big difference, too. Huge. Yeah, I can always tell, personally, just because I've had both. And the fresh pumpkin is always so much brighter mm -hmm. than the canned stuff. And it, the color is totally different, too. It's, it's a lot of work, but I always think it's, like, so worth it. Oh. You know, even if you can only do, like, one a season. Well, and with a crust like this, that's a little bit easier, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. Like... Just take your time with it. You can even make the crust in advance. Mm -hmm. And when it comes out of the oven, as long as it's not in a glass pie tin, you can throw it in the freezer and then pull it out when you're ready. Put that in, which is even better because when it's defrosting while the pie is cooking, uh -huh. so then it gives it less of a chance of your sugar burning up on you also, which is another tip. Well... I digress. Thank you so much for being here, David. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you guys so much for tuning in yet again. And make sure you come back next time. And don't forget your empty stomach.